Hi everyone, Mrs. A here. Today we're talking about function notation. Up until now, if we had an equation of a relationship, we usually saw it in the form of y equals and then the equation. And now you see we've written this as f at x equals and then the equation. This notation is called function notation and it means the y value when you sub in an x value. So we're looking for the y coordinate of a point when you have a certain x coordinate. So we always want to think about this as the corresponding y value. Nothing has really changed, it's just a notation thing. So we have some practice questions here for just practicing with function notation. Here's the equation, it is a parabola, just because we're always thinking about what these represent, right? This is a parabola, it's in vertex form. Um, it has a positive a value, so it's open up, and the vertex is at positive two, negative one, just so we can always visualize the graph. Okay, let's move on to this. So here we wanna find f at negative one. This means the function, which is this, evaluated at negative one, meaning everywhere we see an x, we're gonna plug in a negative one, and then we're going to evaluate, and that will be the y value when x equals negative one. That is it. So let's sub this in. We're gonna take that exact equation. We're gonna make sure that we sub in that negative one where we see an x. Here, we're going to evaluate this. So negative one minus two is gonna give us negative three. Square it, and then minus one. This is going to be nine minus one, which gives us eight. Okay, so this means when x is negative one, y is eight. In other words, the point negative one, eight is on the graph. So we used to think of this as x, y for the point, and now in function notation, this is x and f at x. You see that f at x means the same thing as y. Okay, let's look at a couple of other different problems that we might get using function notation. So the next one that I have here is f at five minus f at three. So when you see this, you're going to do the function with the five subbed in, and then we're gonna do the function with the three subbed in, and we're gonna subtract them. Sometimes students like to do these separately and then insert them into this equation. That's fine, I'm gonna do it all at once. It's up to you and your comfort level. So I'm gonna take that, remember that equation that we had? Let me just bring it back down here. And I'm going to write it with the five in place of the x. So that's gonna be five minus two squared and then minus one. And then I'm gonna do minus, let me use brackets to make sure that I'm going to apply that minus to that whole f at three. And I'm gonna do the equation again. This time I'm gonna sub in a three like this. So if, if we want, we can say that is your f at five and this is your f at three. And then there's your subtraction in between. Okay, so let's evaluate what we have here. Five minus two is three, squared is nine, minus one gives us eight. Minus, now let's look at that f at three. Three minus two is one, one squared is one, minus one, zero for this thing. All right, and eight minus zero is eight. Same answer as before, that's a coincidence. They're not always gonna be the same. All right, and let's look at the last one that I have here. So this is a little bit different. Now we have f at b plus one. So this means that b plus one needs to replace the x in the equation. And then we're going to evaluate. But because we're subbing in something with a variable, the b, we're not gonna get a final number like we got before. Our final answer will have the b in it still. So don't be, um, don't be concerned about that. All right, let's plug it in. So I had the x, which now is b plus one, and we had minus two squared, and then minus one. Let's evaluate a little bit here. We wanna simplify what we have. So the b plus one minus two in the brackets, I can simplify that to b minus one, all squared, and then minus one. I can leave this like this, 
or I can simplify further. If you want to simplify further, remember that this is b minus 1 all squared. So um, just be careful that you're expanding the, the binomial times a binomial carefully here and properly. So we would do this, and then we would expand b times b. I'm going to work it out for you. Um, just in case we want to see how it goes. So b times b was b squared, b times negative 1 is minus b, and negative 1 times b is minus b again, and then negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1, and then we have minus 1. So we want to now combine our like terms, those b's and these constants, and our final answer here is going to be b squared minus 2b, and then 1 minus 1, that's 0. So the b squared minus 2b is our final simplified answer here. We leave it just like that. There's nothing more we can do. Thanks for watching. This is A Loves Math.